There's one. That's a good one. That's a good Cinco fish there. <laughs> Had to let it sink down in there a little bit. Look at that, folks. <laughs> Come here, dude. <laughs> Had to let it sink down in there a little bit. Beautiful Roosevelt Lake bass. Not a giant, but boy, we're back here in the river in the salt end. And one thing I love to do when you start seeing fish up a little bit, we threw a buzz bait for a while. I couldn't get that really going. I couldn't get a bite on it, to be honest with you. But I'm seeing a lot of suspended fish up in these trees. And one of the best things for them is something floating, either an Ica or a Cinco. And uh, man, I love this little four inch Cinco. I live on it at home in this kind of stuff. So, you know, we'll, we'll throw around in here a little bit, see what we can't find, but Roosevelt Lake, Right now, there's a lot going on. We're here in the middle of November and late fall, you know, and it's still hot. So these fish are up suspended. You see, so you can catch some out spooning here and there. Uh, obviously, there's probably a drop shot bite on, but I wanted to get back here and see if we could catch something. You know, I was hoping to get the buzz bait bite or something going really good, but nothing's really going after that right now, but they will eat this Cinco, that light, just let it fall down. I've tried doing a little pitching, a little flipping in some of these trees. Haven't caught anything on it. I'll probably go back and forth with that, but gotta try the Cinco in this stuff. This little brushy stuff like this is a lot of fun to throw in. And uh, you'll catch some smaller ones, but man, in the springtime, we were up in the tonneau end and we were just hauling in giant fish doing this. It was fun. And so, uh, I don't know, we'll try this end of the lake and see if we can find some more bigger fish for us. But. Uh, I would prefer to be able to to uh, to uh, flip or pitch a few for sure, but man, they just seem to be really suspended. You'll see them swimming. The water's somewhat clear in here, even though we have a little algae bloom back here, and you can see it. You know, the the thing is, is in this particular area where I'm at, it's kind of a shallow flat, and I was just kind of riding through here a little bit, and I'm looking down, I'm like, oh man, there's some decent little fish swimming around in here. So let's try to catch a few of them. With the Cinco, it's a lot of fun because it's weightless, you know? And, uh, boy, you could sure see them taking your line off and stuff. It's a lot of fun to, to catch those fish. But there's some good ones in here for sure. Some of them will start schooling up. But, boy, I'll tell you what, I've seen a lot of small fish, too, uh, running around through here. So, obviously, there's some small ones, too. But I'm letting it fall to the bottom. I'll just pick it up over the brush pile and then just let it fall a little bit more. If I don't get bit, I'll pick it up and I'll throw it to another brush pile. But uh, <clears throat> these little brush piles, you could throw to a million of these things, have a blast. Every once in a while, I'm gonna try to keep them honest, maybe throw a little top water and do a little flipping by some of these bigger, thicker trees and see if we can't figure out how to catch some of these fish. Son of a gun. I told you. I told you. There's more down there. Get this thing to fall a little faster. Oh, there he is. There he is. Come on, baby. <laughs> Come on. Oh, he's not a giant, but he's a nice little fish right there. Little spoon bass. Come on, baby. Look at that, little spoon bass. Don't you jump. Get up here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Looky there, folks, little spoon bass. That's what's playing around down there. You know, every once in a while, you can find yourself in a spot where you might catch a few fish. And uh, you better have that spoon ready this time of year, let me tell you. Because this is the time of year to catch these little dudes. I was in about 25 foot of water right there. And there's, you know, these bass will start schooling up this time of year, early, late in the fall like this. I was gonna say early in the fall because it feels like early in the fall, but you know, they're starting to school up a little bit. So I figured let's drop a, let's drop a spoon down on them a little bit and just see what happens. I'm gonna turn around and try to hit that same little spot right there. Seems like there's just one little spot right there where it drops right off into 25 foot of water where I can seem to get them. I'm gonna pull back and see if I can do that again. There was more than one fish down there. 
And uh, I'll tell you what, it makes for a lot of fun. You know, we went up and tried shallow stuff, catching a lot of little fish. And I figured, you know what, let's go see if we can find some of those schooling fish. Because if you can, sometimes you can look into a good solid bag. You know, they kind of hang out in age groups, it seems like. And you can really catch them and have fun. But we'll get out here and see if we can't catch a couple more before the sun goes down on us. And uh, see if I can't figure these out here a little bit. You know, one thing about this time of year is these fish, when they're schooling like this, you'll go and you'll see blank screen, blank screen, blank screen. You gotta go, you know, in and out, in and out. You can look for them, you know, search for them, but you gotta be ready to, to drop right on them when you see them, for sure. Now, see, we're in 18 foot of water. I'm gonna back over here, see if I can get back in that 20 foot where it dropped right off. I know that fish was around here somewhere. I saw it. But once you find the depth of water that they seem to be hanging in, you can usually find them in that same depth of water. Got that one. I must have foul hooked that thing. Or I got a tree. <laughs> no, I foul hooked one. He's foul hooked, look at that. Oh, <laughs> look at him down there. On the graph, oh my goodness. I gotta get him up. <laughs> That's what happens when you're spooning sometimes and you get in them like that and you find the school. Look at this. He's like, I don't wanna let go. I don't wanna let go. <laughs> this one tried to put it under his fin and swim off with it for later. <laughs> That's what he tried doing. Get up here, dude. Come on, you gotta be really careful with these treble hooks, folks. Really careful with the treble hooks. I got him. Look at that. He tried to put that under his fin and save it for later. <laughs> Let's get back down there. Let's get back down there. Look, they're down there. There's some fish down there. Let's see if we can't get one to spark up again. A lot of times you fire the school up and then they settle back down there, but you gotta get down there where they're at. Man, if you get the school fired up, you can have buddies out here catching them, having a great time. There's another one. Oh, he came loose. Man, they must be thick as thieves down there. You know, that one felt foul hooked too. What are they laying down there looking at it or what? They might be darting for it and then don't get it. Look at that, those fish down there. Come on, baby. Boy, there's a whole school of them down there. And you just put the spoon on the bottom and then hop it up. Let me try it over here and make sure I'm not all fouled up here. Sometimes your spoon, spoon will get fouled up. Let's drop it down here on this side. There's one right straight down, look, sitting right up there. There goes my spoon. There's fish following it down, fish following it down. They must have followed it on the way up. Couple of things to think about when you're spooning that you really need to know for sure, is when you let your spoon down, let it fall all the way down to the bottom, number one, okay? That's the first, most important thing you can do, okay? Once it falls to the bottom, we're using a half ounce spoon, by the way, strata spoon. Anyways, when it falls to the bottom, keep your rod tip low to the water, okay? And then pop, and then let it fall back down to the bottom. Pop it, let it fall back down to the bottom. If you have your rod tip up here and you try popping it up here, when you get hit, you're not gonna have any room to set the hook. So you always wanna keep your rod tip low, okay? That's important. Once it hits bottom, reel down, reel up some slack, pop it from the bottom and come up to about nine o'clock or so, you know? And you'll catch those fish, okay? The other thing to remember is, is you notice I'm using a spinning outfit for this. And one of the reasons why is because I like throwing cast master spoons and swapping them out, things like that. Unless I'm using an ice jig, I'll throw it on a bait caster because those things are pretty heavy as they are. But the problem with these kind of spoons is anytime they flutter down and you're throwing them on a bait caster and you're letting them just free spool down like a big cast master has a tendency to flutter and stop and pump the rod, the, uh, spool and when it does that on a bait caster it becomes a nightmare if you if you have your spool set loose oh i just got bit if you have your spool set loose it becomes a nightmare because then you get some backlash so that's one of the reasons i like the spinning outfit the other thing is 
is I'm throwing this on, uh, I'm using 20 pound braid line. Oh, there's one there. He just hit it on the way down. <laughs> awesome. Oh, here he comes. Oh, he's just a little guy. Get in here. They'll eat that spoon. Come on, buddy. Now he ate that spoon. He, he let it fall down and he actually got it pretty good. But I don't want to hurt him, so I'm going to grab my little pliers here just to get that out. I'll tell you what, it really pays, it really pays dividends to be sure that you get good treble hooks on your spoons. Okay, we got that a loose. Well, partly a loose. <laughs> there we go. Okay, so as you can see, when you let the spoon fall and you keep your rod tip low, you got a better chance of catching those fish. I'm getting rudely interrupted by the fish, but that's okay. I'll take a fish all day long. I'm using a 20 pound Smackdown braid line, just a braid line, and then I'm using an eight pound liter, eight pound fluorocarbon liter. It's all I need. Now, you don't want a real stiff pool cue of a rod. You want yourself a medium action. This one's a medium uh, light action, actually, that I like to use from Taipan for this. And the reason for that is because those little hooks, you've seen me hook a few, foul hook a few, and then they come loose. So you gotta be careful not to whale on them too hard. You know, make sure you drag set and don't whale on them too hard. And you'll catch those fish. That fish happened to be in about 30 foot of water. He slugged it when it went down there. I foul hooked my... Sometimes you have a tendency to do this. Foul hook your spoon. That's gonna happen once in a while. While I have the spoon up, let me tell you, very important, this is one of the most important parts of the whole spoon right here, the swivel. Man, you have gotta put a swivel on here or you're gonna twist all your line up. Now, braid doesn't twist as much, but I'll, I'll tell you, put a swivel on, save yourself a lot of grief, and the, the bait works better as it falls, and it really does work really good. We have some suspended fish here once in a while, and the thing that's cool about spoon fishing as well, is when you have suspended fish, is you can drop down to them. If you see them follow it down, I wish I had a little bit better diagram to show you with this, but if you see them follow the bait down, you can actually stop it and bring it right up above them and, and pop it. A lot of times you might get that fish to bite. You know, he'll follow it right and bite it. And the other thing that's important too is with your graph, if you can get away with it, zoom up on it. See what's down there on the bottom. Watch that spoon will go all the way down to the bottom. When you zoom up, you can see really what's going on down there on the bottom. You can see your spoon better when you're popping it. Makes a big difference. Now see, I'm coming up. There's some fish there. Look at that. Woo -hoo -hoo. See if we can get him to bite. There's a couple of them. They're right here. There's some fish right there. We're gonna get them. Oh, they come up from my spoon. So they just came up from my spoon. And I'm popping it. And I'm keeping them right there. Look at those, look at the flurry of fish right there. I'm gonna let it fall all the way down. <laughs> there was a flurry of fish there and I didn't get one of them. Hey folks, for my tip of the week, one thing really important with these kind of swivels, you can see we have the clip swivel. You can pop the swivel right out just like so, and sometimes that will happen when you're popping it on the bottom. So one thing really key is once you get the swivel in place with the spoon, is to take a little pair of needle nose pliers or something and crimp down and kind of lock that into place to where you can't open it anymore because that'll save you a lot of grief when you're spooning. So make sure you just crimp it just a little bit, all right? And make sure that it's closed and it will not pop out. Because a lot of times if you pop into a piece of wood or, and you're popping it real hard down there, that clip can come loose and then you'll lose your spoon and everything. So make sure you just pinch that in there. It'll save you a lot of grief. One other thing I wanna tell you is when you're out spoon fishing, a lot of times if you get cloud cover, and it gets a little darker, you can go to the white spoon, and a lot of times you can catch those fish. So don't be afraid to change from the silver to the white when you have cloud cover. The other thing that'll help you too, is a lot of guys do it. I don't do it all the time, but a lot of guys believe in it and really do it, but they put a red hook on the end. 
Now I'll tell you what, I've done it in the past. I've caught fish on it. I've done it without, I've caught fish on it. But uh, a lot of guys really think that, uh, you know, when those fish go to hit the bait, they'll hit that red hook. So definitely pick up some red hooks. Don't be afraid to put them on. That may help you a little bit too. But those two little things right there be a big difference in your day in fishing if you get a little cloud cover. Got him. He ate that one. I got those little treble hooks on there. <laughs> oh, he's not a very big one. He's not a very big one. Get on up in here. <laughs> Oops, <laughs> I'm dropping my rod. <laughs> Look at that little dude. I'll tell you what, one thing you have to do when you do this kind of fishing is get a good treble hook. You know, that's one of the things that we're doing is catching, catching them, I'll let him go, on the good treble hooks, you know? A lot of the spoons that you get today, they're, they're cheap, but you don't get the good treble hooks, and you gotta make sure you get those good treble hooks, you know, and just replace them. Get those owner treble hooks, those, you know, I mean, it's very important to be sure that you get sharp treble hooks, because I mean, you saw that we foul hooked a few anyway, and that's what'll happen a lot of times when you're down there popping your bait off the bottom, they go down there and look at it, and then, and then they, uh, they don't hit it, but they're down there looking at it. Then when you pop the bait up, you get them. And then sometimes they just react to it really quick. It's a great reaction strike when they get it. There's nothing like the fall. Watching that spoon fall on your graph and then just watching it fall. I'm gonna zoom up where I can see the bottom a little better. If you find the right fish, you'll find them. You'll fi if you find the right spot, drop down there and catch them. Well, we've had a great day on the show today here at Roosevelt Lake. Had fun time spooning. You catch some big fish spooning. If you find the right schools, I promise you, you'll have some fun with this. And what's really cool about spooning is you can have three people in the boat. And if you come over the right bunch of fish, everybody's catching fish at the same time. I highly recommend that everybody drop down at the same time and catch those fish. Because what happens is when one gets fired up, it seems like the whole school down there gets fired up and everybody's catching fish having a great time. Thanks for joining us on the show. We'll see you next week. I'm Johnny Johnson. <laughs> now, see, that's what I'm talking about, folks.